going one and one, and their schedule gets even harder this week. Yeah, and talking about hard matchups, historically, this has been Santorin's hardest jungle matchup. And these two guys, Rush and Santorin, were number one and number two when deliberating about rookie of the split last split during spring. These two guys expose one another's weaknesses more so than any other jungle matchup. Like towards the end of the previous season, in the regular split, Santorin, he didn't really have early game pressure versus Rush, and that was exposed from him, and then we saw a lot of that at MSI. So when these guys expose each other's weaknesses, they're on display for the world. And in playoffs, Rush, he had to expand his champion pool. He went to Sejuani, he went to Nunu, and they had really lackluster performances. So every time these guys clash, one of them gets the edge, and the other one just looks like they have a lot of improvement to do, and I want to see which one it is today. Yeah, I almost feel like Rush creates those types of situations with how aggressive he plays. Yeah. Another lane I want to watch this game is basically the mid lane, for obvious reasons. Xiaowei Xiao as well, though, he used to be known for his consistency in putting up huge games back when he was on LMQ, best mid laner in the NALCS for a split. But then this year, there's been a real fall off for Xiaowei Xiao. He actually had the lowest kill participation among all LCS mid laners in the spring split North American LCS mid laners. But then, you know, according to Impulse's owner, Xiaowei Xiao, he's reinvigorated the split. He's going to bed early. He's waking up early. He's practicing much harder than he did in the spring. And that's incredibly important for Tip, especially in the TSM matchup, because if Xiaowei Xiao can go even with Bjergsen, the rest of Tip will have enough skill, I think, to take down TSM because they are stronger in many of the other positions. Thank God he's going to bed earlier because I remember when he got three hours of sleep before a really big game. Yeah. I remember. I don't know what you're thinking in those situations. I don't either. Well, he's watching, he's watching, he's watching LPL at that point. <laughs> right. But. Well, yeah, well, at least he's learning it, from other reasons. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, as we send it over to our casters to take us into Champions Select, Impact says it's a good time to be a top laner because of the wide selection of champions and strats he's got at his disposal. 어, 일단 챔피언이 무엇을 하든 하, 상관없어요. 요즘은 그냥 잘하고 그냥 좀 라인전 된다 싶으면 뽑아야 되고 야수나 뭐 피즈나 이런 거다할수 있기 때문에 누누도 가능하고 뭐 많아진 것 같아요. 그래서 좀 탑라인이 재밌어졌어요. 그래서 제가 좀 좋아하고 있어요. Uh, 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 please he, for the sake. Go ahead. He mentioned Fizz. Oh. And they watch LPL a lot. <웃음> yeah. I really, I really don't want to see a single <laughs> I don't think it's very good. Well, see, mine was, uh, on the behalf of everyone who's ever played against Nunu Top, please don't bring back Nunu Top. Please just... That was one of the worst experiences of my life, like, ever. And I've had to cast with... Do lineups. Okay, lineups, lineups yes. <laughs> Check out starting lineups on the blue side. It's Team Solo mid. In the top lane is Dyrus. In the jungle is Santor. In the mid is Bjergsen. AD carry Wild Turtle. Supporting his Lust Boy. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you there. <laughs> ah, red side, though, it's Team Impulse. Up top, Impact. In the jungle, Rush, mid, Shaoi Shao. AD carry Apollo and support Adrian. All right, so I guess we're going to get ourselves into champs like pretty soon, and we'll see just what crazy fun things Impact brings out. And what Xiao Xiao brings out, right? That's true, yeah. I mean, if we're just playing Yasuo and Fizz every game, we're good to go. Uh, if Rush keeps up the pattern, he'll just play Evelyn again, but we'll have to see. Cram for your test at the end of the day, because Champs Like has begun. You've got to now pick and ban properly. Well, there's the Fizz ban. <laughs> so already, uh, answer one is correct. Well, yeah, that is a double ban. I guess you get double value out of yeah. that against Team Impulse. Uh, Shower there you go. Using it last week as well. <laughs> TSM have learned what Impulse like to play. Well, the crucial champion to me in the first week for Team Impulse was the Evelyn for Rush, uh, and that is still on the board. Yes, Fizz and Yasuo were very big parts, but Yasuo was, I feel like, a really big part of the Yasuo success was due to the NAR matchup specifically, um, and then the uh, Fizz there for Xiao Wei Xiao. Um, is oh. oh, what? Sorry, I was just wondering if the Rise is going to come in or not. Because I was okay. in my mind, I'm like, okay, so Evelyn's still up, and Rise is still up as like two really important ones, and Rek'Sai is still the grab though. Rek'Sai so is a great cool. pick against uh, Evelyn though, because of the yeah. tremor sense. You can see her when she's trying to come in for one of those ambush. So uh, he oh. goes, skips right over the Evelyn. Then all right, Rek'Sai is going to be classic rush. Lee Sin. He's definitely been keeping up his practice on the champion as well. One of the main ones he used in Korea uh, to grab rank number one over Faker. Yep. And he's bringing it overseas. All right, the Lee Sin is back again in the summer split here in the North American LCS. Move had played it in week one, but now it's Rush's turn to prove that he is absolutely amazing. And I have faith in the player. Impact gets his rumble and TSM to make their next choice. Yeah, you know, 
pretty much as scheduled here for Impulse. They've got early game pressure. They have mid game team fight prowess with the Rumble. So check check for the classic team Impulse playstyle should be similar today. Also, since they saw no ya or since they banned Yasuo, they are free to pick the Nar for Dyrus. We'll see how he does in the Rumble matchup. Uh, once again, this is definitely a skill matchup. Can easily be tilted by jungler intervention. Both the junglers have you know, premier early game jugglers. So yes, they do. Let's take a look at that uh, top lane jungle matchup, which is always very important in impulse games. Rush and Impact, two of the strongest players for the team, and yeah. two of the guys that have really, really just worked together so well. And we talk so much about the team impulse top jungle synergy, one that TSM almost doesn't have at all. So if you talk about matches being tilted, well, how about a two versus one the entire time? So I watched their show last night and they said on the show that they spent an entire week, you know, practicing top priority style League right. of Legends. Cool. Where they just they ganked top a whole bunch that Dyrus be the carry. So they said that they put in a lot of practice on it. Well, speaking of things that teams put practice on, as the crowd chants behind us, Bard could be one of them. <laughs> That's the champion. Right. Yeah. I'm just, you know, transitioning to various things happening around the stage right now. Sivir Thrash, though, still a great utility lane down here. This would be interesting. TSM does need some team fight damage, though, with a bunch of tanks for the most part, and LeBlanc not known for her real 5 on 5 power. Maybe Wild Turtle does pick something with great cleanup. Yeah. We are on 510. There were some Jinx nerfs in the last patch. Yeah. I always talk about, you know, chaos, quote unquote, whenever we talk about impulse playing, but really, the planning stages for planning to play against Team Impulse is one of the is one of the easiest because Team Impulse, you know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get the tempo game style. You're gonna get the fast early game. You're gonna get them pressuring, looking for tower dives, looking to transition into a mid game win. So you know exactly what you're getting uh, when you're gonna face Team Impulse. And the question is, can you come up with the counter for it? They're looking for the Annie to set up a good NAR ultimate. Mm -hmm. They've got Bjergsen on LeBlanc, the mid game carry, the, or the mid lane carry, excuse me, the mo one of the easiest champions for mid lane to snowball with. Very, very prominent assassin here. Mm -hmm. And they're challenging Xiao Wei Xiao to that uh, mid lane assassin uh, who can carry the game harder. Absolutely. When you've got a team like Team Silla Mid who have traditionally done so well to get mid lane ahead, and you talk about Xiao Wei Xiao who's had a rough split so far, a rough season so far. It just seems like, great, let go, let Bjergsen go carry you. Wild Turtle on Vayne also interests me quite a lot. Not a champion I've seen him play much, but, you know, again, a carry to add to the lineup here. And Impulse will let time tick down as Azir is the lock-in. Azir versus LeBlanc can be a very difficult matchup. Yeah, that one's pretty scary for uh, for Xiao Wei Xiao. Now, he does, he has been able to play farm lanes versus assassins fairly effectively. Um, pretty much throughout his entire career. So we'll see. This is a real test. You know, yeah. how well can you play uh, the long range farming versus an all in assassin, or not even an all in assassin, just an assassin in general yeah. uh, in Bjergsen. The thing also, though, about that vein counter pick into the Sivir, uh, I'm actually very, you know, curious to see if Wild Turtle steps up this game and can carry TSM. You know, can carry some weight because that is a matchup I really do like for yeah, Wild absolutely. Turtle. Absolutely. Uh, Vayne counter pick into uh, Sivir looks pretty good for him. Definitely agree. She's quite strong. The one difficulty Vayne will have, though, is against Azir in team fights, where she just simply can't hit him back and get slowed around. But Wild Turtle solo killing Apollo could definitely happen this game. The question is, TSM, they're dueling. We don't typically talk about their laning strengths uh -huh. as far as talking about what those two players bring. Uh, whereas we do characterize TIP's dueling as being very, very consistent. So uh, getting that advantage may be difficult for Wild Turtle. We'll have to see as we get ourselves into the game. But before we do jump into the rift, log on to Twitter and send your game predictions. Send either hashtag TSM win or hashtag TIP win to at LOL Esports. We'll be checking in to see how you're calling this game once we get the match started. All right, let's see how uh, TSM can do. There's the spacing of their carries is going to be very important. I just mean the positioning, the team fight spacing. Mm. Uh, Turtle and Bjergsen, they're both on very, very mobile, high DPS champions for the team fights. They're going to need to spread out. They're going to want to avoid uh, the possibility of Rumble tagging both of them with the ultimate. That's basically all that um, the communication between Turtle and Bjergsen has to be, coming from different angles, uh, working around the uh, AOE from Impulse, the Azir ultimate, 
the Impact Ultimate. Yeah. And trying to pick apart. This is a duck and dodge team from TSM. Well, it's thankful for TSM that, you know, since you say they do want to duck and dodge, there's not a lot of reliable hard CC for Impulse. There's no Sejuani, no Annie, no Leona. None of those bigs sit here and take a million damage. So yeah. maybe it gives room for TSM to use those mobility abilities. That reliability factor should be on TSM side. The the Annie plus the Nar. That should be something that TSM can count on. Oh. Ooh, TSM got, got spotted it. coming in and Bjergsen's caught off. TSM now stuck in the impulse jungle. All five are around. Q hits Dyrus. And Impact okay. is right here to put people on fire. Lust Boys was in a lot of health here. No flash hook. TSM gets out. So neither team will be starting with a tremendous amount of information, but TSM did get a couple of the wards down. And because they saw all members of Team Impulse, they know that the response wards that you usually have to deal with on the bottom side won't be there. So TSM, because they went for that invade, because it, uh, all members were revealed, they can swap the vein up onto the top side here. Is this is this an attempt at calling the lane swap from Impulse though? I early I, landing, I wouldn't actually like Vayne. Like not really, really? early on, Sivir can push you through. Uh, I like her after 12 minutes, but I don't think Vayne has any winning matchups in the first 10. All right. I will take your word for it. I could just be a worse Vayne than everyone else, and someone's going to be like, new. Here's all the free matchups, and I'll be like, oh, you're right. Either way, Bjergsen, they're getting a lot of damage on Shao Wei Shao, but takes like four Sand Soldier attacks for the harass. Flask for both these guys, really trying to chug through everything to deal damage here. One more minion till level two for both these mid laners. Bjergsen working on that melee minion. Got it. it. Gets answered right back. So because we have the lane swap, of course, and because there's so much trading going on in mid lane, you got to you gotta remember for the mid laners, uh, the mid lane pressure comes way earlier uh, since they can't keep track of anybody. And Xiao Xiao is the one shoved up on Azir. So he's pulling back very quickly, wants to get a little bit of vision down on that side, goes toward the exit from his own jungle so that he doesn't get three man ganked. And everyone is safe. After all is said and done. Wild Turtle is pushing the wave in very fast. The same thing we've been seeing every single team try today in the North American LCS. Cut off the turret. Yeah. A little bit safer move from TSM is that they put that lane ward down, the trinket ward, so they would see if Impulse were going to try and pull that same move of the sneak in and try and get just a uh, couple members under the turret to such experience. Oh, that's how I shows flash, though. Everyone's still here. Barrier pop. Oh, oh, almost enough damage! The last tick of Ignite brings him only down to about 12 health on this one. Impact's TP keeps him safe. TSM with the advantage, I think. Woo! Checking on some more potions here as well. Xiao Xiao gonna be able to stick around. Doesn't get either... Oh, got one. Got two. All right. Back to OK, and with the Flash Chargers and Potions still in tow, Xiao Xiao will have enough health to survive this lane, I believe. Well, Bjergsen also still has two Biscuits left. Yeah. All right, nice by Apollo, knocks the turret down. He's sitting on about 900 gold, so he can get the Pickaxe Recall. That'll be answered by Vamp Scepter of Wild Turtle, most likely, as the top side of the map is getting knocked very low. Yeah, the question is, can they finish this turret off before the reinforcements arrive? Pretty slow going here, since it still does have champion reduction, uh, champion damage reduction. Yeah. And Impulse are able to grab the... One thou... Ooh! Oh. Expecting the dodge. That was just a prediction of uh, Less Boy backwards dodge. Adrian not able to read Les Boy's mind. Mark of a true LCS pro player. Telepathy. <laughs> We're going to start seeing uh, Magneto helmets show up on the stage. <laughs> That's why Helmet Bro is so strong. He never truly doesn't dies. He usually do doesn't he usually die? Shh. All right, well. There still are deep TSM wards on this red side jungle, and you can see Santorin returning to that side of the jungle. Uh, the, the one thing that TSM did gain from that top shove is they saw Rush. Any time that the jungler shows himself, you take away something. And Santorin wasted no time. He took away the Raptor camp. However, because they haven't seen Rush anywhere else, 
No, he's going to be topside. Shows himself again, but Mr. Dyrus has made his way to the top side since his turret is down, and they really want to force this one. They're just allowing Apollo a freeze. After that bottom lane turret went down, he never even recalled. He's just banking money. Oh. Through exactly what Hanser did last game, just farming up and getting huge. Dyrus does not feel safe extending pretty much ever now. So TSM made the call to concentrate all resources up top just to even up turrets. They come away with it, though. Turrets are evened up, and they have that slight gold lead. bjergsen has got nine for himself in the mid lane. And Santorin, hard farming, uh, was able to take away that Raptor camp as well as one other. He's up on rush as far as CS is going. So that's where yeah. the gold is coming from. Dyrus down 300. The rest of the team, though, up 500 in his stead to make it a gold lead for TSM as you point all that out. It's it's pretty much, yeah, the, most of the rest of it is from Santorin, by the way. Yeah. Um, so since Rush keeps showing himself in lanes, Santorin's taking that opportunity. I just point this out because whenever Rush gets beat Santorin, uh, it's very visible. And everyone is like, oh my god, Rush is just crushing him. Santorin's not doing anything. This is what it looks like when Santorin beats Rush. This is what the style difference means comes away with CS discrepancy, and the gold lead is still uh, very much there. It's only, you know, two and a half, 250 or so. Sure. Gold, but... But still relevant. But it's still relevant, almost as much as kill. And we're seeing further style differences between these two junglers, by the way. It's going to be a warrior enchant for Rush versus the Cinder Hulk for Santorin. Both these junglers could have gone either way. We saw CLG do Cinder Hulk Lee Sin in their opening game, I believe. And we've seen Warrior Rek'Sai from a couple of teams as well. So, style choices abound. Centaurin here to be a tank for the team. He will join up with Dyrus as the beef. Yeah, no surprise with jungler choices. Uh oh. Save roll pop, though. They're trying to do some damage to Wild Turtle, but of course, Santorin is here and forced the ward hop away from Rush. In the TSM field just safe. Bjergsen is starting to lose some health against Xiao Wei Xiao. The Azir, though, is out of mana at this time. Santorin able to take a chunk out of Rush. And now they're pinging the invade after it. They do have a war. Oh my god! All right, he's just. Oh, he's got barrier back up. Oh! Got him! And his flash. Oh, Xiao Wei Xiao! The ignite's still on him, and he goes for the flash. Bjergsen once again coming out with a solo kill in the mid lane. And their faith in Bjergsen, grabbing him LeBlanc, pays off. Xiao Xiao, so yeah. bold of him to go with that Azir uh, right into the Assassin and does end up paying for it. Yes, we must mention, of course, there was the early support that Bjergsen had in the mid lane. This is sure. CSM. They sent several resources towards mid lane to attack Xiao Xiao early and you know, get him a small advantage in the matchup. Yeah. But in the end, the one versus one is where he finds the kill. And I also do want to point out a bit of disrespect by Shai Wei Xiao. No magic resist glyphs or anything. <laughs> so he's sitting on base MR against LeBlanc. Even doesn't AD carry on him do that. But she's going to show up at some point. Apollo taking a fair bit of damage. Actually manages to block the Cutlass slow with the Spell Shield. Right. That's a minor cooldown. But looks like now as we transition later on to the game and Vayne has lifesteal, she starts doing a lot better in the matchup. Because she doesn't get like ricocheted down anymore. Yeah. I, uh, the... Uh Cutlass active, used very quickly there from Turtle. So he can get the extra pressure in lane, force him to chase. Let's see here, as far as uh, Santorin goes, coming up, oh, he is level six already. So he can use his network of tunnels uh, to come up for a counter gank. Meanwhile, he's continuing with his farm. By the way, the Cinder Hulk is even better at hard farming now. Yes, the damage to champions was nerfed, but it does even more damage than it did before to jungle camps and doesn't take any time to ramp up. So if you're playing this style and you're hard farming, uh, it's much better. Okay. Lands the hook. All he gets for it is kudos. <laughs> and Santorin looks to invade on the top side. He'll get a pink ward for his troubles, but all the camps are down. Oh, Ooh. nice knocker from Shao Wei Shao. Still fighting Bjergsen. Blue buff on the uh, LeBlanc. Takes a fair bit of damage. Still wants to do battle. Wow, those are fun fights to watch. LeBlanc and Azir. Ooh. The 20 minion lead for Bjergsen, by the way, after all is said and done, though. He is getting very far ahead. Santorin is looking for a tower dive with a flash play from Rek'Sai. However, Rush is there. 
That is the bonus of picking Tremor Sense against Rush. Not going to make one of those uh, risky tower dive moves since he sees two people there. Rush just lying in wait. Or actually, maybe they will bring Lust Boy to the party and uh, sway the numbers. Yeah, Flash Tipper is likely to turn into a kill if the CC can land. Lust Boy gets back in lane in time, though. And again, we're seeing this... Apollo Sivir being pushed into her turret, not really able to fight back. Santorin is here, knocks up Impact. The battle has begun. Dyrus does not have a Rage Bar, but Impact doesn't have a lot of a health bar either. Forced to run away under his turret, and the Eclipse doesn't even kill the minion. Yeah, he doesn't get to use his Equalizer for the Wave Flare. Looks like it doesn't end up mattering in the end, though, uh, because they back off for the Red Steel. Oh, Red's not even there. Just the Crud Steel. I feel like DSM should have pressured that Wave at the turret uh, to try and deny Impact since he does not have his equalizer for CS. Mm. Bjergsen was recalling, though, and there's the risk of Rush and Xiaowei Xiao eventually being there. Mm, I feel like it takes a long time for Azir to make his way up there. Okay. But uh, fair enough. In any case, uh, Impact will be happy, scraping together a few more minions. Yeah, he's actually holding uh, up in minions against Dyrus. At the end of the lane swap, he was up 12. He's still at about plus 10 here, so not too bad for the Rumble. Overall, a 1,500 gold lead for Team Solo mid, though. It's equal turret, so that's the kill in the farm lead. Once <laughs> again, Bjergsen trying to make LCS big plays. Knock it down to Xiao as much as he can. Yeah, I, this is a fun matchup just to watch, just because of both of them are trying to... Ooh, ooh. Oh, Flash Tabers lands the knockup as well. Barrier's there, but he can't get over the wall. Santorin body blocks the move block. Team Solo mid, committing jungler and support to mid once again. Boom, get another kill. Uh, summoner list, Xiao Wei Xiao. Easy target on the Azir having shoved up. The TSM gain the most classic of TSM advantages. Mid lane pressure. Will they transition to Dragon? Looks like Dyrus wants to go handle the wave that's about to hit to his turret. And uh, TSM will be content to collapse down into the river. Turtle's also got his wave shoving, so they should be able to grab this. They could have used Tibbers if they had uh, yeah. made the call earlier. But it looks like with Santorin right waiting for waiting to cut off whoever goes to the bottom turret, they will not go for it. Santorin was waiting up by the drop. Ooh, good spell shield by Apollo. Takes very little damage. He screwed it up, though, and the hook on a Lost Boy. A lot of damage in from Xiao Wei. Xiao pushed them into the team. Apollo hit on the backside. That will be the kill picked up for Impulse, though. Bottom lane turret dies at the hands of Wild Turtle. Really can't be that sad about it for TSM fans. Yeah, they have uh, both side lanes pushing now since Dyrus was able to get top pushing as well. And although they got the support kill for Impulse, they committed five people mid, and they weren't able to pressure the turret afterwards. So all in all, just a small amount of gold able to be reclaimed. Whoa! Oh, wow, he steals the blue buff. Move. Dyrus here to help. Santorin is taking it up, and Wild Turtle here to deal some damage. Bjergsen cuts off Rush, the kick over the wall. <laughs> Bjergsen just shows back up. Ignite in a queue, not going to give him the kill just yet, but Bjergsen still wants it. Uh, uh, all right, that's going to do it. <laughs> that's going to do it. Bjergsen gets the kill, the solo kill on the Rush. Over the wall and everything else. 3-1 to one TSM, 3,000 <laughs> gold lead. Yeah, what to do? Mm, I've landed my Q, but... Nowhere to go. I right. point out there are two total assists for TSM. It's really just Bjergsen and friends running around. Bjergsen has 100% kill participation. Big yeah. surprise. Dragon cleaned up after another job well done by Bjergsen. What a... Just really the, the move, though. That one play from TSM is... A significant change from what we've seen, you know, their MSI collapse, their their week one, you know, half and half sort of performance from TSM. That was an aggressive move from Santorin, backed up by the rest of the team, having the confidence, even though people were a few seconds behind, to tunnel in versus three people, grab the smite, and chase everyone out of their own jungle. This is against Team Impulse, the team with Rush as the jungle. That's true. The winner and rookie up, or sorry, winner and runner up of rookie of the split for spring 2015. And right now, Santorin getting the much better end of it all, defending his title. 
Got his, worked up his small lead through, you know, hard work farming the jungle early on. And a counter gank, uh, taking away a lot of the early presence of Lee Sin. Now, uh, he's got the stats to back it up. And he can place deep vision, uh, getting into that jungle with the side stone, pretty much matching anything that Rush tries to bring. It's interesting. So Rush has a sight stone and has for some time, still has his yellow trinket. So eh. like a lot of wards able to be put down. Only one sweeper at all, and the Rosh, but Dyrus getting caught up. Rush cannot kick him in time. Good jump by Dyrus to get out. Gank does not succeed. Pings go down onto Santorin. Alerted to his presence, so impact should not fall to this. Well, I guess they're just gonna wait. They don't they don't uh, respect Santorin's move. Silver will pop, there comes the equalizer. Santorin and Lust Boy low on health and impact. Gonna get himself on the scoreboard again. Nice QQ from Rush and Apollo cleans it up. Three to three on the scoreboard. Impulse fire back. We see the reason for them not uh, being scared of Santorin there. <laughs> they have more resources on the way. Hard to chase his ear. He's still got his ultimate left. Let's see if Bjergsen can pull it off. Flash dodges the chain. But that is still the flash required for that one. Top lane turret getting hit. Likely to be a kill. Teleport from Impact to hold the mid lane. Bjergsen goes to cut off the three members of Team Impulse. Can he snipe a straggler here? Takes some damage from Apollo. Red buff is on. Santorin joins with the ulti. Good spell shoot from Apollo. Oh, triple knockout. they go. Exhaust pop to keep him alive best they can. But Rush is the first kill. Dyrus joins in, stuns against the wall. Adrian goes down, a whole ton of kills picked up. And that's gonna be Wild Turtle picking up a fourth. Great fight for TSM. At this point, TSM beating Team Impulse across the map. Uh-oh. Kills him. And he's back, the Ignite takes the kill. An ace for Team Solomid, 17 minutes in. Pierksen is 6-1-1. One, one. Whew. Yeah, they had a ward on to Impact, but he doesn't care. I have Flash up, and Pearson does go down. That's a pretty big shutdown for the Rumble. Um, at the way that Impulse games go, though, we very rarely see comebacks from them. Let's take a look at this. Everybody joins the party. Dyrus charging up his Narbar, works his way up the lane, and he's able to close the distance due to Santorin uh, using that tunnel flash knock up there. Took by a little bit of time. Turtle. After leaving mid lane, they will come in and pick up the last shot on Xiao Xiao. So, basically, lane swap. They were able to weather the storm of the Lee Sin. Uh, Santorin hard farming outscaled him at this point. And TSM with stronger moves across the map due to their presence in mid lane. Mm -hmm. Early gank by multiple members mid lane, opening up Bjergsen to grab his solo kill and then a return presence from Lust Boy and the rest. And that all culminates in a pretty darn good for Team Solomid. Bjergsen early blue licks are only 19 minutes into the game. But with Abyssal and Merlin Amakan already done, he feels like that's the next step to push it farther. Adrian, Ignite was up. Would have, Well, if he used it, maybe he would have died. But mid lane's still under fire. Turret number three in the sights for Team Solomid. They've won purely on kills so far. Rush is forced to get away as well. Bjergsen's still, I think, the only mid laner that I've seen in North America to go with these pre-20 minute blue elixirs. As soon as he gets, sometimes even after only an item and a half or so, he grabs one when they want to uh, press an advantage. Yeah, it's just whenever TSM decides we're going to start team fighting and controlling dragons and we think 5v5s are happening, I mean, yeah. it's a great power spike. The true damage doesn't scale. You just get it and it's just a lot. So if if the entire team is planning on going for these moves, uh, maybe we see, you know, Turtle grab a, one of the Elixirs of Wrath, I think. It's called and see if he can get some extra value out of it. If I can get the kills. Right now, though, TSM, they've got really, really deep vision on the blue buff side jungle of Team Impulse. So that means Dyrus should be playing careful. Let's play at his back. Impulse have already set up a pretty good ward line. They actually catch Bjergsen running through the jungle. They knock him back in. Even the rush Q lands onto a monster. Oh, oh my. man, Equalizer finally turns it around. Another right. kill for Impact, and top lane's under fire. They need to make this count, though, because the split-pushing Vayne is taking turrets very quickly. Turtle already going to get the inner one, 
and he's gonna pressure impact into returning to base. No ultimate on the rumble though. Ah, uh, Wild Turtle taking lessons from me from the MSI tournament. Vayne Souls foot pushes the bot lane while his team dies. Looks good for it though. 1 0 on him. And Impulse do manage to trade a tier 2 for the tier 2. And now they're actually walking right at Baron. No, they're not doing it. <laughs> no, I no, mean, no, no. <laughs> it, was, it just looked like it. They were walking towards it. You're right. Yeah. But Dragon, the team solo mid. Turtle, Santorin, and Lustboy able to grab that one very cleanly. Solo mid looking to get even farther ahead. They're sitting on two dragons to zero, a 5,000 gold lead at 21 minutes. A lot of sizable advantages for this team in blue. Let's see if Impulse can use that silver speed to outmaneuver TSM. They do need to find a fight uh, with a number advantage. Uh, it's going to be fairly difficult, though, because the vision coverage for TSM is complete. They only have one quadrant of the map uh, that they do not have perfect intel on, and that is this red buff side of Team Impulse. All they have to do is avoid that area. They can draw Impulse out onto the map fairly quickly here. Um, if they just clean Baron up a little bit, and they can try and force Impulse out into their hands. Fog of War is definitely your friend when you're working with LeBlanc, oh, true. as well as a 6-2 and two LeBlanc. Bjergsen can easily 100-0 anyone who walks too close. Anyone on this team, by the way, because they don't have a tank. No, or any magic list items. You've got a giant belt and a no magic mantle on rush, and that's the sum total of his tank items. So, yeah, squishy lineup for sure. Bjergsen has his pick of the litter for who he wants to assassinate in this game. There we go. Move all of your vision over to the Baron side of the map. Set it up. LeBlanc can make some picks. They can gain a whole bunch of pressure on Baron because they have Vayne on their squad. Oh, God. Vayne plus Rek'Sai. And Nar can easily take Baron while LeBlanc sits in Fog of War looking for an ambush. Prepping the minion waves here. Dyrus and Turtle doing their side lane duty. Getting those ready. And right now the gold on TSM is focused on... Oh! Jeez. The gold on TSM is focused on three really big carries. Bjergsen, Wild Turtle, and Santorin all have more gold than the richest member of TIP. Even though a few of them have quite a lot of farm and, and a couple of kills, just there's just massive advantages. Apollo, yet again, good spell shield. All right, they've got double pinks in the river for Baron. Good uh, red side of the jungle warded up. Bottom lane will be pushing. Outer turret, or secondary turret down there. Pretty clean here as far as execution for TSM. Yeah. Let your TP go on the other side of the map. The rest of your team wants to be near the next big objective, which in this case is Baron on the top side and then stay together. Find people in your network of wards. Bjergsen and Santorin find Rush kicked back. He's going to dash away. Nice play by Rush to get out of this one. And they're actually chasing up Dyrus, Bjergsen with a silver ulti. Dyrus has an, a prepped Narbar, though. It's just hovering close to uh, Mega Form. So he's ready to teleport in at any moment. And Team Impulse rightly back off. They do not want to take a fight in that jungle where TSM has set up their vision now. Turret does end up going down, and it looks like they're going to get off another purchase before they go for a Baron bait. Um, they could just continue split pushing, but uh, the only secondary turret that they can really do is mid, so probably see some more control around the red buff side of the jungle. And you're seeing TS, uh, TIP rather have to go as a group just to put a couple of wards down. TSM have strangled Vision pretty well, although off the recalls, Impulse gets some time to get it back. Yeah. That mid-secondary turret is pr pretty much the hardest for TSM to crack because they don't really do all that well grouped up as five in a corridor um, against Team Impulse. With the Azir and Rumble, you don't want to give them any openings to be able to get a good combo off. So TSM rightly focusing on neutrals. Taking away the blue here. We don't want Azir to have that. See if they go back over to clear vision on Baron, though. Or if they actually yeah. try and make the split push work. Well, I like, though, you talked, uh, when you talked about the gravity games uh, from last week, where they were splitting their attention in a lot of different places, TSM are making concerted efforts in one spot at a time. They all go to blue buff, clear that away. They've got enough wards to make sure Baron's not getting snuck, whatever. Okay, blue's done. Go back to the split push. Narc goes to the bot lane. The rest of us can cross back to the other side of the map. 
Yeah, set up Baron did again. I feel like where they can gain most advantage is clearing out all the vision around Baron and trying to bait. This LeBlanc is so scary for all members of Team Impulse right now. Fog of War is the stuff of nightmares at the moment. So they send Turtle to prep the top wave, and we'll see if they uh, swing from mid over there. Down to Baron. Yeah. Looks like TSM really haven't made a concerted effort for setting up Baron, though. It's primary goal, keep the minion waves in good shape. That's done well so far. Secondary goal has been taking easy to grab objectives. It was the blue buff. Now it's Dragon in a minute. They've managed to take the last three minutes just clearing out buffs and prepping for Dragon number three. Yeah, I guess they will take the uh, safer route. Dragon, a much more tame beast. It seems like TSM are basically prodding at any mistakes, and if Impulse screw up, they'll go in. Yeah, Bjergsen's constantly looking for poke on anybody yeah. who gets too close. He goes in with just the you know, WQR combo. Maybe he lands his chain, maybe he doesn't. Don't really care because just that initial combo is going to be a big chunk out of anyone. Uh, he's keeping them bottled up inside their base pretty much. And the longer that you keep Team, M team Impulse bottled up inside this base, you're gaining a huge amount of income oh, wow. across the map here, controlling pretty much both sides of jungle. Hook from Adrian not followed up on. No one else, no one else was there. From Impulse's point of view, though, they're really just waiting for an opportunity to have a five versus something less than five uh, pick and pop the silver ultimate. But TSM are not giving that to them because they are traveling in a pack. And they moved the solo from solo mid right here. The whole group is here. Fight in the mid would be uh, some good open territory for TSM to work with. Getting chunked out there for Bjergsen though, down to half life. They do not force the issue. Let's see where they head to next. Bjergsen recalls after getting chunked, going towards death cap, so no Ludens build on him. You know, we saw a couple of different builds. Yeah, a big wave bot, which Dyrus could easily clear. And of course, he's a blue trigger to see that Impulse are not, in fact, going for Baron. But that was a bit of a risk. Nice bait there by TIP. Yeah, honestly, there's not a lot of threat behind that bluff. That's true. But um, good of TSM not to face check. Use a scrying arm there from Turtle and the Prey Seeker. And so... TSM have a big wave pushing out top lane. They send the Gnar after all to go clear bot, so Dyrus will continue to get some more farm as he builds tanky. A good mix of armor and magic resist as Apollo and Impact are both pretty scary in this one. Zonia's done for the rumble, means he can zone people out even better, and I wonder if TSM will wait for this death cap combined. 300 gold away on, on Bjergsen. Oh, interesting too. A second item defensive item here. Cowl for Turtle. Yeah. On the vein. He's got plenty of power with the Phantom Dancer plus Blade of the Rune King. And with uh, the double solo lane APs, looking to stay safe. So, no meaningful attempts on Baron still for solo mid. They are just giving. And the thing is, like, they had this 5,000 gold lead for so long, like, now it's 6,000 gold, but it took seven yeah. minutes to grow that by one They K. did get another dragon. Yeah, but that's still another 12 minutes away to go for Dragon 5. This feels overly slow to me from Team Solo mid. Just a touch. I feel like they would be able to get a Fog of War pick if they really focus. Here's oh, mid there's the hard engage. Speaking of overly slow, in they go. They pick up Adrian, and Impact might be next. Flash the way, Summoner heal. Here comes the Flash engage. But everyone kicks him back still. A double kill for Bjergsen. Oh, Turtle's trapped. He is very trapped. He can't get over the wall. That's going to be a kill. Finally answered back. The Azir turret of Shao Wei Shao helping quite a bit. How'd he get in there? What the heck? Oh my god. Bjergsen, his third kill of the fight. 9-2-1. and one. Doing all the heavy lifting for TSM. All right. That should definitely be Baron for TSM. Looks like they're focused Without on Without an AD carry, I don't think they can. Looks like they're focused on turrets. I guess so. I mean, Bjergsen... All right, they're gonna get the turrets instead. Um, the turrets are really hard for them to get down, so they see the opportunity to get a turret, they'll take it. But again, they're gonna have to make another. Oh, oh, jeez. I am curious about that replay to see how Turtle got himself inside the uh, divide there. 
But Bjergsen putting out the massive deeps, able to clean up the fight for TSM. So all in all, TSM another victory. Let's take a look here. So this is one of their picks. Yes, they were cleaning Baron. Move over, sideswipe them. There's the uh, Righteous Glory from Lesfoy. Able to get a beautiful Tibber, tibber stun there and force this. After taking out one, all of them force on the run. Okay, so Dyrus gets knocked out of it. Turtle Does he flash? flashes yeah. into it. That's how he gets in there. As expected, Turtle. <laughs> he got the kill. Uh, uh, no, it actually went over to Bjergsen. Oh, he did? He didn't get any of it. Did he get an assist even? I don't even know the... Uh, oh, yeah, he God. has three assists now, so yes. Right. The three kills were assisted by Wild Turtle, but uh, I'm going to say not worth. Yeah. How'd Turtle get in there? Ah, oh, he flashed in. Yeah. <laughs> he flashed in to die and not even do any damage. That sounds like Wild Turtle. He does get bored. Well, it's true. That's how he plays. Split pushing. Hey, man, if I had 295 minions, I'd just feel good about myself. I don't care about kills and deaths. I just want farm. At home, my keyboard actually shows my uh, gold per minute because it, like, hooks into League of Legends. If I have over 400, I'm just like, I don't care. I did what I wanted. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> I'm not a good teammate. I, mean, I know, we played rank five. <laughs> <laughs> I just play Fior and stay top lane. Well, like TSM going to try and stay around Baron. Looks like they will bait, try and bait in Impulse again because inhibitor turrets, trying to siege up one of those is just not an option for them. They could try and gain another side lane advantage with a split push to prep this Baron work they're doing, but jeez. Oh, the Bjergsen poke is substantial. That impulse have the inside track on the mid lane. Depends on how good the sideswipe is from Team Solo mid. Cyber ulti from Apollo can always be used to reposition and get out of Harry's situation. Lust Boy's flash is down despite his distortion boots. So a bit more time has been gained here. Lust Boy's heading towards Talisman of Ascension, by the way. That's what that Forbidden Idol is going to be for. And as he sits on 400 gold, he's got a long road ahead for that item, but more move speed is soon for TSM. Good. They'll be able to make a play. Hey, that Vayne and Rek'Sai are doing work on Baron as well while all this action goes. See if they've bought enough time. Several deep pop the TP from they Impact. Baron goes down, but the entire team's at half health. Will they follow through? TSM looking to re-engage, maybe through the box, but this could be a good equalizer. This is the fight that you're going to have to watch for. So uh -oh. just popped by Impact. Several old times out. Land turns him away. No stun from Dyrus. Is this the time that Impulse finally turns it back around? Dyrus getting kicked. There's the equalizer. One for zero. Is there follow-up? Wild Turtle forced to run away. Dyrus just buys enough time for his team to disengage safely. Well, Dyrus got left hung out to dry there, so there was some discord in TSM uh, communication there as he gets a little bit too far forward and the rest of the team uh, not willing to commit to that. Dragon's up for Impulse, and at this stage of the game, finally getting a Dragon at 33 minutes is that was a huge boost. That was great for Impulse. They were able to not only grab that 6% Attack damage and ability power for themselves, but also delay the number five from TSM. And they bought themselves a bit longer to huddle inside the turrets. The Baron and the Dragon both off of the field. Nothing to draw Impulse away from their turret defense game. They've just bought a tremendous amount of time for themselves. We'll see if though, if the split push, the Baron empowered split push, if TSM are finally able to, you know, at least take some, uh, cracks out of those uh, inhibitor turrets, but yeah. Wild Turtle's definitely up to the task, going immediately for the split push. TSM definitely wants to gonna use beat the him? Baron buff. There's no one here that's going to win the 1v1 against him. I think Rush still no, has room to go. Yeah, your only hope is to wave clear at the turret. Sivir or Azir um, will probably have to take up duty and just deal with a tower dive if he decides to go with the tower dive. Well, we'll see what happens. Right now, that first Dragon buff adding a lot of stats, but Baron adding just a little bit more. Cool dance out of Xiao Xiao. The Azir ultimate is a huge part of the turret defense. So Bjerg's in there able to weaken the defenses of Team Impulse. Very true. With a good uh, solo play. We'll see if that does translate into an inhibitor turret going down, though. It seems unlikely. Bjerg needs to get some poke over the wall or something. Get another blue elixir, right click once in a while. Death Cap and Void Staff now done on him. I think he can one shot uh, everyone but Lee Sin on a full combo. So watch out for that. Bjergsen can absolutely evaporate someone. 
You have to keep wards over the wall. Impulse have to put them over the wall to see when Bjergsen's coming in or they'll get killed from Fog of War. You're seeing one ward right there. That's exactly what Impulse need. And yeah. Just clear it away. This is the test here for Team Impulse. They've had a hard time coming back from games where they get an early deficit, where they don't start out you know, with strong, strong early moves from Rush. Ooh. They're making their stand here. Let's see if they can do it. Quickly back to base. Everybody should be getting home guards for Impulse at this point. And no. the shove runs through. Gets away from Adrian, half health on him, and a good amount of damage. TSM stays to knock down the turret right as Dyrus goes Meganar. Lantern out on the Sivir. Here comes the re-engage, the Bjergsen clone trying to buy some time. Eclipse are onto the back oh. line, but uh, down goes Lee Sin. Bjergsen gets traded back. That's like all the kills of TSM. The gold left on the map actually quite a bit lower now. TSM get away safely. Yeah, and the front line got chunked out. Santorin's extremely low. Dyrus down, so... They lose the inhibitor turret. They do not lose their inhibitor. Uh, Impulse, they at least won't have to deal with the super minions coming in at the moment. But the door is open for TSM in the bottom lane now. So split pushing, probably still on the menu for TSM. Absolutely. Now, of course, a long time to go for Dragon 5. But with complete map control, Baron 2 is only three minutes away. And this is a curious situation for Impulse. Usually they win fast or they lose fast because they keep trying things in the mid game if they start to get behind uh, and they're the lead of their, their opponents oh, man. gets out of hand very quickly. Yes, Flash. Nice, he's already ready for the Flash. Stands in the correct spot. One more crit would have killed him. Nice try by Wild Turtle. Yeah, he saw it coming. Instant Scrying Orb, but no crits. No crits, no kill. Uh, he actually uh, missed a possible auto attack. You can pretty much do an instant reset by tumbling into a wall. And I don't believe his first attack came out in time. So he could have gotten the three hits in Silver Bolt proc. Close. But hundreds of seconds off. Wow, a little bit of damage on the Bjergsen, but a lot more on a Shao Wei Shao. <laughs> and he's still not bought any magic by the way. Shao Wei Shao doesn't care about defensive stats, and he gets chunked out every single fight because his of it. His philosophy is basically, if Bjergsen lands a combo on me, I'm going back to Fountain anyway. And I haven't died from it yet, so... This defensive item is home guards. I guess that works. Exactly. More damage in the turret. Last way does not get hooked. Rush down to half from Bjergsen. All right, so this, you know, funnel point that the uh, opening to the base does provide is something that Impulse can work with. They can set up Azir soldiers at the front, and they have a rumble ultimate. So Xiao Xiao is on guard duty here. Sand soldiers just patrolling the entrance to their base trying to fend off TSM's assault. They're even warming up. Like, boxing at shadows, like, this is gonna happen to you if you walk forward. Better check yourself. Oh. <laughs> These are your soldiers. I got it. Yeah, yeah. We're good. All right, Dyrus gonna be holding up the top lane for now. He seems to be the, uh, the one always chosen in case things push in without TSM realizing in time. Still, of course, Bjergsen and Wild Turtle are the ones who clear the waves first. If they get the chance, they're given all the gold. Darius gets the scraps, but it's enough to be tanky. 0-1 and 5 in a 40-minute game. Only one death. Not bad at all. Impulse get the rare chance to clear their own jungle as TSM had all just recalling. Recalling? Recalled? So when both the objectives come out at the same time here, uh, Impulse... Oh, actually, I don't think Impulse have the timer for the dragon, so... They could try and go for the trade and at least get a dragon out of giving up Baron to TSM because I think that going into Fog of War is just yeah. too risky for them. Um, but they actually, I don't think they got the timer on dragon, so they might not even be able to trade. Nice. They're heading over that way, though, after they cleared out mid lane. TSM made sure they had wards on Baron first and then went to go contest dragon. Mid lane, though, has to be cleared first away, so TSM still playing by the numbers, a slow, controlled style where they are not giving up a chance to split push, they are not giving a random siege any room to start. And this is on top of Scuttlecrab. Wild Turtle is seen doing this, so Impulse will show up. It's not fast. Baron's nearly dead. 2,000 health picked up by TSM. There it is. Now, here's the flash engage. They catch Impact, stun to the wall. He had no chance to do anything, and TSM take him down. All right, Baron buff. There's the big play for TSM. Impact down. 
they can probably shove all the way to the Nexus through bottom lane. And that's exactly where they go right away. Who cares about clearing mid? We can win the game without Rumble. 40 seconds of the respawn. Wild Turtle shows up first. Mid lane gets cleared by Beerson. He's going to show up soon, though. And Dyrus barely even cares about this damage coming in. Banshee's Veil popped. Uh, that's step number one for taking down Turtle. All right. Well, step number two and three have enough damage. And with Impact Dead, that's probably not going to happen. Bottom and hip goes down to TSM. Take the slow road one more time. They're going to go for Dragon 4. So another waiting game. Clean the map. Grab the neutral. So do you really care more about minion kills than you do about actual kills, Rick? I don't no. find that hard to believe. <laughs> you don't find that hard to believe? I find it hard to believe. Yeah. No, I know. I just say things for exaggeration. You're sake. Uh, a PvE player? Like, for example, most things don't really deal tons of damage. <laughs> <laughs> they just deal large amounts. <laughs> How much does one damage weigh? Uh, let's go one pound per pound of damage. Are we talking metric ton? No. Okay. We're in America. Just checking. When we say football, it <laughs> means the weird round oblong thing <laughs> with field goals. The egg. Yeah, hand egg. That's what football is. All right, well, we got the uh, triple barreled up cannons trying to do work on the top side Where's here. Where's the banner of command, Lost Boy? As uh, TSM make work. It's so pretty. Uh, five members collapse. Here they go. Oh, man. Down goes Adrian. Solo kill again for Bjergsen, sitting on 11 for himself. Top and hip drops as well. Four cannons now in tow. Pop the Zonias from Impact. He's forced away. Two inhibs down. Minions battering on the front door. TSM going to go ahead and knock down the third inhib turret. Milking all the fantasy points there for owners of Team TSM. Azir drops. Everyone's dying now. Impact can't do anything, nor can Apollo. This is going to be absolutely GG. Solomon answer back that they can defeat a top four team, and they will do so against Team Impulse here. Woo! Bjergsen on that lip lock as well. What a great game from him. TSM, they went back to focusing mid lane. Throw a few resources over there. Ganks for multiple people. Support ganks as well. Bjergsen takes that advantage happily and turns it into many kills in the mid lane. 12, 3, and 3. Not only was he at 15 of 17 kill participation, he had more kills than the entire enemy team. He had more kills than anyone else on his team had assists. Just that game is, if you want to know how TSM plays and why they're good, it is exactly that. Bjergsen got some help and then solo kill after solo kill after solo kill. Yeah. We'll yeah. practice the top lane focus game style for but. a week to make you happy, <laughs> Dyrus. But, uh, first team impulse. Second week, LCS, TSM do have a strong, strong competition. This week around, they've got a strong schedule. CLG tomorrow. So yeah. Very excited to see what they pull out for that one. And you know, as we talk about uh, what kind of League of Legends these teams are playing, you know, these teams definitely have different styles, generally speaking, week to week. Uh, Impulse, we said, is, is the team with chaos, right? They want to play Yasuo and Fizz. They got banned this game. They got banned the last game they played against CLG as well. And when you're stuck with the regular team fighting mid like Azir for Xiao Wei Xiao, and then no reliable hard engaged to make team fights happen, all you're doing is letting this this force for chaos, this LeBlanc run around and basically out team impulse, team impulse. Yeah, they were able to control vision TSM because they had that good start and just that that one outpost of control of the mid lane there, just yeah. sending a couple ganks mid, they were really able to control rush. Rush didn't get to do anything on his, um, his Lee Sin, the signature champion here for him. Uh, wasn't able to make the early game play happen. Santorin outfarmed him during that early game because of the lane swap. You know, yeah. It was something that Rush had to adjust to coming to the competitive scene from solo queue. Uh, he did a fairly good job of adjusting to it last split, uh, but this time TSM just did a better job. Yeah, Solomon did a great job playing the second half of the lane swap, even though first turret had gone over to Team Impulse. But... Uh, as we talked about with this game, Bjergsen was absolutely massive. We actually, just for fun, we have a good uh, kill montage from Bjergsen. He had 12 of them throughout this game. <laughs> so uh, this is the first solo kill. Shao Shao actually has all summoners up at this point. He's got a lot of life as well. All right, let's roll this clip. Take a look here. Bjergsen is chugging on uh, the mana potions. 
All in potential. Oh, he instantly clears the wave with That's the WR awesome. so that he can guarantee landing the chain. Yeah, that was really good. I didn't see that one coming. He's like, how's he land the rest of the combo? He clears everything away. And then here, even though Rush kicks him over the wall, the chain still goes. Yeah. <laughs> chain still hits him. If you are back in a range, the fact that he chases this too, like Rush flashed into his own turret and Bjergsen's like, no, it's fine. If you take the Q, then he guarantees to land uh, the chain as well. But if his chain was on cooldown, I feel like Rush should have taken that because if you W into him and least it connects, the model connects for Q, then you get the damage. Yeah, and the, I mean, the W has to hit the ground, so you can theoretically even go through it as well. But more coming in. This is actually just like really good engage or attempted engage by Dyrus. Good reflexes by Impulse, but double yeah, kill. Just Bjergsen kills everyone. He gets another one on the, on the back end as well. There's Turtle. Ignore that bottom right hand corner. Doesn't matter. Bjergsen comes in for another snipe, though. Over the wall. Bjergsen was at, or uh, Turtle was actually just a distraction. Flash R. Cues him at the back side. He even landed even the, wow. the, the chain. <laughs> he landed the E on Shao Wei Shao. All right. I missed that one too. So, uh, as we've seen today, Bjergsen is quite good at League of Legends. Um, Maybe Check. one of the biggest, good. one of the bigger understatements said today, uh, but yeah, solo mid improved to two and one. Wild on turtle still bit. wild. Wild turtle still incredibly wild. Uh, still managed to keep himself to only one death. That was his only death the entire game. So, uh, you know, golf clap for wild turtle to not get himself killed more often than that one. Uh, but it was it was impulse. You know, kind of unfortunately playing the way we've now expected them to, where it's like impact does really really well. Unfortunately, he got focused out later on. Uh, the bot lane was still consistent. At the very beginning of the game, Apollo was like 2-1-3 and three or something, and Adrian has similar score line. Um, like, those two signs of the map did very well, but Xiao Wei Xiao doesn't respect Bjergsen. No MR glyphs. He brought barrier, but still got solo killed multiple times, and we're missing things from the sort of central part of impulse in a lot of these games. Yeah, and a lot of that mid-pressure did come from the bottom lane, less boy roaming. So yeah. you have to factor that into the bottom lane performance as well. And they gave a self-sufficient 80 carry the wild turtle to make that one happen. But now we're going to hand it off the dash to the analyst desk for a word with two of our winners. That's you. Wait, so. Thank you, gentlemen. Joined by Wild Turtle and Bjergsen after a solid victory there over Team Impulse. First thing I want to discuss is actually Wild Turtle. The pickup of Vayne. We've only seen it on Otter here in NA, but we have seen it in the other regions. Why are uh, AD carries extending their pool to Vayne now? Uh, I think it's when you like pick. A, you want to pick Vayne into a place where the lane is good for her, and if you're picking her into like a counter pick, it's like really strong because you get a free lane and you're really strong mid game and you can basically 1v1 any AD carry. And that was our plan that game to have me split push. And yeah, that's why Vayne is a popular pick right now. So Annie, Vayne, you were willing to take that into Sivir. Yeah. You're happy with that match. So we did see you guys go with that uh, invade, put the wards up in the top side. However, tip moved out of vision, recalled, went bot, and the lane swap uh, came through. How does that change the game plan then? Because as you said, is it now I need to accelerate and, or get back into that 2v2? Or fine, I'm vain, I'll just farm. Um, basically, you want to hit a power spike first. And if, once you hit your power spike on vain, you just want to go against Sivir again. And then you just want to keep trying to 1v1 her and get her in a 1v1 position as much as possible. All right, and Birix, in the matchup we found you in LeBlanc versus Azir, we did see the Cassadin hover. So I wanted to get your take on what would have been the better choice if you were on the flip side of this matchup, because you seem to handle the Azir quite easily. Um, I think this is really personal preference. Both champions work against LeBlanc. The Azir versus LeBlanc matchup is very volatile. It can really go either way depending on the players and depending on how much jungle pressure you're putting on that lane, because Azir will most of the time win the 1v1, but if there's a lot of jungle pressure, the chains on his ear, it's really hard for him to get away from the gank. So it is a very, it's a matchup that can definitely go either way. And I feel like he decided to pick the skill matchup rather than the really safe cast and pick. And as you mentioned, there was a little bit more focus put on the mid lane for TSM here. So that brings me to the jungle matchup. And although Santorin is not on the desk, what we spoke about before the game was the fact that Rush and Santorin have extra, extraordinarily different play styles, but they're very, both very good at what they do. So... You know, how do you feel Santorin dealt with the attempted pressure by Rush this game on his Lee Sin? Um, I actually think he, he dealt with it very well. Rek'Sai is just another really strong early game jungler like Lee Sin, so there's going to be a lot of small skirmishes, a lot of fights, but I didn't really feel like Rush was really seeking out these fights, at least not around my lane, and it wasn't successful anywhere else, so I wasn't really feeling the pressure he was putting out compared to Rek'Sai, and that's also why Lee Sin is such a risky pick, because if you don't get that early game advantage and you don't get those ganks off, he doesn't... He's not nearly as strong later in the game. All right, and then you guys did establish a pretty decent lead early on, up to about 5, 6K through the mid game. Wild Turtle, though, there was a bit of a stall out in the middle of the game. Is this uh, due to, you know, just respect given to the power and the potential of Team Impulse to climb back into it? Because we saw 
you have to wait for a Baron, have to wait for another Baron in order to really press into the base? Uh, I feel like we probably could have made that game a lot cleaner and just uh, like forced them in situations where they had to respond a lot more because we put down our wards, but we really didn't do anything with our wards. We just let them clear it, and then we were basically waiting around a lot instead of making aggressive plays. So I feel like we could have being more aggressive and doing stuff in their jungle a lot more. And talking about cleaning things up, I'm going to hit you with a big one here. After MSI, not having the performance that you guys wanted to have, I want to know what's different or what is going to be different this summer split as opposed to the spring split, which was touted as the split you guys were using to ramp up to international, international play. Bjergsen? Um, I think some of the things is, is we need to respect the way the other teams play and the way the other regions play because we were very set in stone with our own play style because it was working for us in scrims, even against the team at MSI, it was working for us in NA. So we had a very set play style that we thought was really good. And we felt like even though the other play styles were working for the other teams, it wasn't really something that we were going to enforce because ours was working so well. But I think we need to be a lot more respecting of the other teams' play styles, the other teams' picks, and see how they play. Because essentially, I think the way they played the game was better than ours. So does this mean that you're going to be looking for opportunities within this split to almost force different play styles in order to get practice with them? Um, it's something we started doing last split where... Obviously, a lot of people say we leave Darius an island, but there are a lot of games where we're putting a lot more pressure on the Darius lane, even though people don't notice it. Even this game, we're looking to pressure top a lot more, and it shows Darius has a lot more impact in these games, and that's something a lot of the other teams were doing, especially teams like Fnatic. We're putting a ton of pressure on Hooney's lane, and it's something every team needs to be able to do to pressure all different lanes and have different play styles. All right, now moving into tomorrow's matchup, the big one, TSM versus CLG. Uh, Wild Turtle, they've brought Pobelter in here, and uh, so far things are looking pretty good with him on the LCS stage. How do you guys feel that uh, their team dynamic has changed and their potential has changed with Pobelter in the mix? Uh, I feel like uh, Link and Pobelter were pretty similar in play styles, and I think CLG has always been a strong team. They just seem to falter closing to the playoffs, but I honestly think they're the sh same strong CLG, and they have a the similar play style, and I still think they're the same CLG. All right, well, you're going to be going up against Poe Belter in that mid lane there, Bjergsen. Thoughts on him and the addition to CLG? Uh, we've been scrimming against them a pretty good amount. Obviously not this week because we're playing them, but in the previous weeks we have been scrimming them a lot, and they are a really strong team, and Poe Belter is also a really good player. I feel like uh, he wasn't necessarily held back, but he kind of needed a team to help him grow and really help him grow as a player because he's always a really strong individual player, always a really strong lane player, but... Sometimes you just need uh, maybe a good coaching staff, maybe just some really solid teammates that you can trust to really take your play to the next level. All right, well, everybody's definitely looking forward to that marquee matchup tomorrow. Congratulations again on your victory today. It was well fought. Now we're going to pull a broadcaster lane swap, but we'll be right back for the debut of teammates' new AD carry, Nien, in a battle against his former LCS teammates, CLG. Now you won't want to miss it. Hi, no, Pokemon. Dude, I don't know how, but Meowth knew English. What the hell is that? It's a really special Meowth. Meowth knew perfect English. Silver will pop. There comes the Equalizer Santorin and Lustboy low on health and impact. Gonna get himself on the scoreboard again. Rush is the first kill. Dyrus joins in, stuns against the wall. Adrian goes down. A whole ton of kills picked up. Flash the way Summoner heal. Here comes the flash engage, but everyone kicks him back. Still a double kill for Bjergsen. Oh, Turtle's trapped. Can I save? Can I save? I have all the five. Can you fight them? I have ult. Yeah, no flash. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Yeah, no flash. Rumble. CC nice. on your rumble. Rumble. Nice, nice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have ult. Milking all the fantasy points there for owners of Team TSM. Azir drops. Everyone's dying now. Impact can't do anything. Still a bit answered back, but they can defeat a top four team. And they will do so against Team Impulse here.